want it. This past weekend was the last weekend of FRC build season. All the teams need to have their their robot sequestered and bagged and tagged and all that stuff Tuesday night. Some teams are, are building a second robot, so they have a practice robot, and then they, they build components and they bring some components to the events. Remember, I think rule R18 says there's a withholding allowance of 30 pounds, so you can bring 30 pounds of essentially custom parts, unassembled custom parts, or assembled things that have custom parts and off-the-shelf parts into the event. 30 pounds or less. Week zero scrimmages that were happening last week. There was a big scrimmage in Connecticut at Suffield Shakedown. We talked about that last week. And there's also, there was a big event in New Hampshire. And um, those events went pretty well. New Hampshire had the official first component. There were wood goals and defenses and all of the other week zero events that took place this past week. This was a nice looking playing field up in Minnesota. Team 2846 posted this on Facebook. There's even a um, off-season event in Australia. There's a team down there, Barker Robotics in Australia, had hosted an off-season event. There's a lot happening on Chief Delphi, and there's a lot happening out in the first world right now. Dave Lavery posted this from his team, 116 Epsilon Delta. They usually do something like this, a modular control system, and I think this is amazing. It's a really nice design project for a team. It puts their control system in a box. I'm amazed by the num number of speed controllers, and so I want to see what the robot is doing. That's that's a lot of motors. The Ankylosaurus Team 5817. It's quite impressive. They've got a nice looking robot, powder coated, a turret shooting, um, two wheeled shooter, eight wheel, eight inch pneumatic tire tank steering system. So the wheels are staggered inside their drive base. Kind of a cool tweet here. This was a, um, a tweet that recapped the last five years of FRC team from Team 5460. I like I the trash can and the tote. The, there's a lot of videos, pictures, and releases of teams. Probably the most impressive one I've seen so far. Best robots performance I've seen so far is, so, is a Purdue team at 1747. They had a scrimmage over in West Lafayette. And these guys posted a video from their actual um, robot match showing autonomous defenses being covered, traveled over, and also shooting at the high goal during autonomous. So their vision system is working. They're showing us that shooting in that very small goal up high is attainable. Check out 1747 Harrison Boiler Robotics. Here in Indiana there was a kickoff and we were talking to one of the teams who, who went there and the two the two main takeaways that this team got one thing was about visibility another thing was about gear ratio and robot speed they learned that they are too fast the field was not very wide open as it has been in the past they changed their ratio from like seven to one in their tough boxes up to like twelve and a half to one now they're going to be quicker more torque not not as fast but higher acceleration another thing they learned was that even though there's some visual impairment because of the defenses the the one thing that was the worst was the was the drawbridge because it was tall and it had this solid thing that goes up and down you couldn't really see around the drawbridge even though the drawbridge might be hard for your opponent to get through it also impedes you from seeing across the field if you put that drawbridge on your defense i heard from people at the manchester week zero event that the metal is a lot more slippery than wood is with regard to the robot and coefficient of friction. So as you're driving over things, you're going to spin more as you go over the metal pieces. Uh, and this is more of a, of a product issue. We've heard from FTC teams and FRC teams that some of our wheels are, are cracking or breaking down. And in a lot of cases, the first thing we ask, are you putting thread locker or something like Loctite on the screw as you put it into that polycarbonate hub? And that's a big no-no. Do not use thread locker on any types of polycarbonate. Keep it away. Don't try to fix anything with it. Don't use thread locker on polycarbonate. Right now we're making a whole bunch of uh, team versions of the, the hanging bar, the scaling bar. So first asked us to provide these. We said yes. Let's go see how they're doing. You'll see these out of the events.
industry chips in Boston. The year oh, we were there, actually. That's fun. What are you doing? Nothing. This is just this is just me and my fake baby. Seriously, one of the students on the robotics team is working on the robot right now, but she has a fake baby, and it has sensors in it. So if if she puts it down, it cries. So I figured I'll take it, and she can work on the robot. I'm doing what I can for the team.